For those who encountered probe errors or cartographer issues in the last video, this guide should save the day. Today, we'll dive into reflashing the cartographer firmware. And, uh, confession time. I got a little overconfident, tinkered with the firmware, and, well, let's just say I'm really good at creating my own problems. So, consider this video my self-imposed penance. All right, let's get started and reflash the cartographer we just took off. Following the instructions from the cartographer guide, we'll go with the method of cutting a USB cable and attaching a JSTPH connector for communication. Cut the cable and strip off the outer insulation to expose four thin wires. Next, crimp the four wires using JSTPH terminals and carefully insert them into the connector, paying close attention to the wire colors. This step is explained in detail, with videos, on the website, so it's a good idea to check that guide. Here's the cable I made. What do you think? Having one of these feels reassuring, even if you tinker a bit too much like I do. Honestly, it gives me some peace of mind. Plug it into the cartographer you removed from the 3D printer, and let's move on to the next step. By the way, I almost forgot. Don't forget to connect it to your computer. First, download the cartographer firmware. You could search for it on Google, but since you're watching this video, I've conveniently added the download link in the description below. In this video, we're navigating from the cartographer official page to the GitHub firmware page, but it seems that link is no longer available. It's much more convenient to use the download link I've provided in the description below. Be sure to download the firmware that matches your cartographer version. Since my Cyborg Voron Trident is V3, I'll be downloading the V3 firmware. The latest firmware versions available are 5.0 and 5.1, but since 5.1 has some reported issues, it's best to download version 5.0. Here are two types of firmware, the Catapult Bootloader and the Cartographer firmware. Thankfully, these are combined into a single bin file on GitHub. Download the full survey bin file. Also, make sure to choose the one with a CAN bus speed of 1 mem. Click on the full survey Cartographer CAN 1M500 bin file, and then hit the download button on the right. Next, we'll put the cartographer connected to your PC via USB into DFU mode. The official page does mention that this step can be a bit tricky. To enter DFU mode, use a metal tool, like tweezers, to bridge pad 1, boot 0. Once it's firmly in contact, tap pad 2, reset with another metal tool. When you short boot and reset, you'll hear a sound from Windows. It's a clear and helpful way to confirm you've done it correctly. You can check if it's in DFU mode by looking on in the Windows Device Manager. Search for Device Manager in the Windows Start menu or Taskbar and open it. Then, look under Universal Serial Bus Devices. If you see STM32 Bootloader listed, you're all set. You might also end up shouting, it's not showing up, just like I did. If that happens, try unplugging and reconnecting the USB connected to the cartographer. After a few tries, it should finally get recognized. It finally got recognized on my fourth try. Once you've got everything set up, it's time to move on to flashing the firmware. For the flashing process, we'll be using STM32 Cube Programmer. Just search for it on Google and install it. In Japan, at least, user registration was required to download the program. 
It might be the same for you, so be prepared for that. Version 2.14.0 of STM32 Cube Programmer is recommended. Version 2.16.0 has known bugs that can cause problems, and there's no need to use later versions either. So, let's stick with the stable 2.14.0 release. Please start it up once the download is complete. Once the program is running, click Open File in the top left corner and select the firmware you downloaded. Then, check that the STM32 bootloader is recognized in the device manager. It's connected in the previous process, so you don't have to, but I'm a worrier. Change the connection method to USB. Port should, of course, select the USB to which cartographer is connected. Then click Connect on the right side to connect your computer to cartographer. An error popped up saying, the device is read only. Even adjusting the cartographer's properties didn't fix it. It's quite a puzzling issue. If this happens, here's a brute force solution. Unplug and reconnect the USB from your computer repeatedly until it connects successfully. Finally, it's connected. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about this method, but, well, Sometimes you just have to roll with it. Next, specify the address for the firmware flash. Since we're flashing the Catapult firmware, we'll use the default address 0008000000. If you're performing a different type of flash, there's a handy reference table on the Cartographer website, so be sure to check it out. Once everything is set up, click the download button to start the flashing process. Flush is complete. This completes the process. Now, disconnect the cartographer from your computer and reattach it to your 3D printer. This completes the process. Now, disconnect the cartographer from your computer and reattach it to your 3D printer. Before unplugging the USB from your computer, exit DFU boot mode by shorting the reset pin twice. If you open the device manager while resetting, the STM32 bootloader entry will disappear, making it easy to confirm that DFU boot mode has been exited. Additionally, once it's out of DFU mode, you can bring a metal object close to the cartographer, and the blue LED will light up to indicate it's back to normal. Finally, it's time to reattach the cartographer and wrap up this flashing adventure. Looking back, it was tougher than I expected, but hey, we made it through together. And maybe, just maybe, we've learned the golden rule. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Laughs. Thanks so much for watching till the end, and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, happy 3D printing.